First, we look at the Chinese views on history and how do Chinese people consider history? What is the meaning of it? First, we look at uh, Confucius, who actually uh, collected information and made the book Chunqiu, which gave the name to the Spring Autumn period. It's based on this book. And it is said that Confucius established Chunqiu, and the rebels and thieves feared it here from Mengzi. Kongzi cheng Chunqiu er luan cheng zei zi ju. And what does that mean? Because Confucius saw history as a way of passing judgment. He considers the things happening uh, to have certain right and wrongs. And he would like to record them in a sense that he says this is moral or this is immoral. And it is described in the following, Rong Yu Hua Guan Yi Zi Zi Bian Yan Yu Fu Yue. Fu Yue here means acts which represents punishment. So, you know, one word of compliment, right, is more valuable and prestigious than gorgeous dress. And one word of criticism is harsher than the punishment of acts. Here is a direct example. You see that if you say that someone kills someone else, in ancient Chinese, the records are written in different verbs. So if you say uh, you zhu kill someone, using this verb means that you killed someone because this person is making trouble for other people and, and you killed the villain to save the day. This is you zhu someone. Shi means you rebelled against your upper level, your, your king, uh, without justification. So you're a rebel. Yeah? And that is the way uh, Chinese people look at this. And you can already see something. We have uh, those examples showing here, and Chinese people uh, at the time like to use verbs with only one character. Uh, in Wen Tianxiang, Zhen uh, Qi Ge, so this is an article he wrote when he was imprisoned by the uh, by the Mongols, and, and he, he, he said, Both examples refer to historians at the time, actually in the um, spring, autumn, and warring state period. Yes, is that a question? Uh, uh, this is the point I'm getting to. Oh. Yes, yeah. So, so uh, in in these examples, the the historians, actually the historians working for the the uh, royal court, they insisted in writing down what uh, the the people in power did wrong. In both cases, they said someone murdered the king without justification. It's unjust. And even if this leads to the death of the historian, they insisted in doing so. So we can see that uh, Chinese people, uh, especially the scholars, they hold this idea, uh, especially you can see in recording history. They are not only doing records for practical purposes, you know, which year there was drought and who said what. They uphold this higher value that they are being responsible for history as a higher idea, because this is the, the guidance for later generations, or uh, maybe a, uh, also a constraint, or basically something there to, to stop people from doing bad. And in Chinese history, throughout, you, you can see the roles of uh, scholars or historians. Uh, it is those people who basically hold a particular position uh, you know, on the moral ground. So the interplay between power and those people you know, actually uh, play important roles in, in Chinese history in many events. Uh, of course, this means that uh, Chinese people tend to see history or historical records as a moral guideline. 
you know, there are good and bad examples, and uh, this also means sometimes people can manipulate this because, of course, in most cases, histories are written by the winners. So I don't know what, what the losers have to say, but if the winners get to say who is right, they will say who is right. And also people would get into this idea of forcing judgment. You know, they, they always want to figure out who is right and who is wrong, even though in some cases this really would be oversimplifying the story. And in fact, they know this. Right? So the next quote states from Zigong, this, this is a uh, student of Confucius, actually. Uh, so he said, uh, it means that the, this uh, king, Zhou Wang, so his evilness is not as exaggerated you know, as we normally say. It's not that crazy. Therefore, a, a gentleman would hate to have a stain because then all the bad things would be attributed to him. You know, if you are considered a bad guy, then everything that happened in your time would be blamed to you. So they know that this way of writing history leads to exaggerations like this and leads to things which are sort of distorted. But they want this because this is like the educational resource that they leave for later generations. Rico. Okay, and um, what else are Chinese people trying to do with history? Here's the quote from Tai Shi Gong. So this is the uh, person, Sima Qian, uh, the grand historian, uh, if you look up in English. He made the uh, huge collection uh, of historical records in the Han Dynasty. From the time, uh, starting from the myth of the starting point of Chinese civilization to basically his time. And he said, uh, what do I want to do with this collection of records? So he would like to investigate the connection between heaven and humans, right? How, how uh, is there any uh, rule or Tao that determines how, how things go? Yes. Uh, when uh, this, yeah. this is the Han Dynasty, so more than 2,000 years ago, uh, starting roughly. So it's like you know, in a formal period? It's, it's really old, yes. Uh, so, so of course, he only wrote records up to that point. Yeah. But later on, you have to rely on other sources. But uh, in, in the things uh, we're going to see today, uh, I've taken many quotes from his collection. Yeah. So, so he would like to investigate the connection between heaven and humans, and to understand general rules right, uh, through ancient time to now, so from before to now, how things changed. Is there any understanding we can take from that? Yeah. And, and to establish the pers uh, perspectives of one system. So, he also stated that this is my school of saying, you know, this is my perspective. Um, sorry, yes. What, what is exactly the meaning of heaven here? What, what does he mean by heaven and humans? Ah, so, okay, the question is what was meant by heaven? Uh, I think it would be easier if we look at many examples, but uh, loosely Chinese people in the old times, they refer to heaven as a kind of higher power. It, it doesn't particularly refer to any uh, religion. Right? It depends on maybe which religion they have at the time. Or, but in general, uh, they believe that the sky or the heaven uh, has its way and it, its will. Yeah. But not necessarily a, a conscious mind. Yeah. OK. and. Um, Tang Taizong, so secondly, the quote from uh, the second emperor of the Tang Dynasty. So this is like, uh, like 1,500 years ago. And said, if we, if we use copper as mirror, right? because in the old times they take a piece of copper and polish it, this is the mirror. Before they learned the coating technique, of course. Uh, then one can correct dress and hat. OK, um, you know, am I looking all right? 
And if you, if you take a history as a mirror, then you know rise and fall. And take people as a mirror, you can be clear about gain and loss. Uh, in this quote, he is actually talking about one of his advisors. Uh, he wants to say that this advisor is my good mirror because he always tells me when I consider something wrong. Yeah? Uh, but you can see how Chinese people value history. In general, it is so. Uh, next one is a bit long. I didn't write out the, the full translation, but it says, you know, people spend uh, 20, 30 years to, to study uh, the, the books, uh, the writings, the books left by uh, the wise people. But when they encounter some issues, they're just like any, anyone else you can find on the street. And why is that? And some people would just uh, listen to one old story and they would benefit for a lifetime. Does that mean just one saying on the street you can, you can find uh, is, is better than all the old wisdoms? It's because that if you read books but you don't think about how to use them, how to tra translate them into uh, wisdom, then it's empty, right? Because you, you, if you see a, a turmoil in history, you just say, okay, that's what it is. And if you see one incident, you only consider it as one incident. What can you gain from there? So when looking at history, you should consider yourself inside the situation and ask, you know, when you, when you read and, and go to that place and you just cover up the book and, and ask yourself, what would I do if I was in that situation? Right? Uh, what would I do in that situation? If you look at history that way, then you can not only improve knowledge, but you can improve wisdom. And that's why it's beneficial.